Hello Slopers, Tim Knight here, and let's look at the VIX. We uh, have a couple of years of history to look at here. Not even that, more like a year and a half. Here and back in the dark, dark days of late 2017, early 2018, volatility was basically extinct. We got down, we were literally grinding down into eights, if you can believe that. And uh, in a very short amount of time, we went exploding from eight to above 40. And uh, we peaked on February 9, and the federal government decided to print up a few trillion dollars, throw it to the market, and take care of that problem nice and quick. So over the course of months, it went grinding down and down and down and down. And then, out of the blue, once again, Q4 2018 took place. And we had just this W-shaped nuttiness here. Uh, where the Fed was desperately trying to control things and they would lose control, gain control, lose control, gain control, lose control, gain control, lose control. It's like, damn it, gain, 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 gain. So they strangled volatility again, kind of like here. And as of Friday, we got beaten down to sub-teens again. So it looks like once more, you know, as long as they had trillions of dollars to print, um, everything would be fine. And once again, out of the clear blue sky, things just went exploding. In two days' time, we went from 12 to 21. Just pivot the digits around. Nearly doubling in a matter of, you know, in number of trading hours. So, pretty extraordinary. Um, cynic that I am, and there's a poll beneath this video I'd like you to take. Um, my fear slash guess is that they're going to once again weasel out with some kind of 48 hour extension or one week extension or 15 year extension or God knows what uh, because uh, they're going to see what the stock market's doing and freak out because um, they will do anything to win 2020. Um, and so I, I, I would be delighted to see them say, screw you, and put their hands on their hips and just, you know, let the market do what it may. Somehow, the notion of allowing the free market to behave freely and organically, uh, that doesn't seem to be the theme these days. So I'm expecting them to muck things up again for the likes of me, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. And so take the poll. I, I'm, I'm interested in your honest opinion. Just make your best office pool guess uh, if they're going to stand firm, because it's only two days from now, uh, or if they're going to, um, you know, slip their hands into their laps and say yes or no, sir, thank you, sir, and just do whatever's necessary. Now, I just wanted to take a survey um, or an examination of some of the key indexes just to see what's what. Let's thumb through them. Here's the Dow 30. Now, as I pointed out ad nauseum, uh, we broke the trend line here on the 25th, and some slippers like, oh, you can draw trend lines anywhere you want to make any points. It's like, well, no, because these are really good trend lines. They actually matter. Um, so it did count that we broke it. And the funny thing, and, and trend lines are like this, just because you break a trend line doesn't mean the market goes straight to hell. It broke the trend line and then climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed day after day. That's all right. It was beneath the trend line the whole time. Then we started getting some more genuine weakness. You know, right along here. And, you know, as I keep saying, it's not like we've lost, you know, we're not fairly valued now. It's not like we're at Dow 3000 and everything's okay. We've only lost, you know, a few weeks of gains. So, big deal. Uh, but it happened quickly, which is a nice feature of down markets. Um, but it is important to note that, you know, the, this minor trend line, not this monster down here, but this minor trend line um, did, in fact, get broken. Uh, in a similar fashion, the brother of the Dow Industrial, the Transports, um, it too has a failed trend line and a failed horizontal breakout. So this is a failed bullish breakout. Back here, it looked great for the Transports. This is totally finished pattern. Look how it was off to the races, just nowhere to go but up. That has completely puked all over itself. As you can see, failed bullish breakout, failed trend line, failed horizontal, two failed horizontals. So totally limp uh, on that one. And so as we look at you know the Dow Composite, we got agonizingly close to a lifetime high. 
back on the 20, 20 um, what was the 24th of April. And we've been in kind of fits and starts, slipping a little bit lower ever since. Uh, and we, uh, we did break also this, um, this horizontal. So all mildly encouraging, but again, this could all be neutered with one tweet saying, oh, we're almost close to a deal. Believe me this time, honest. The first 173 times I promised a deal, I was just joking. This is the 174th one is the charm. So one tweet would wreck it. We shall see. We shall see. Um, NASDAQ, of course, has been extraordinarily strong. And uh, as we look over here, um, it's a long, long ways away from breaking its own uh, bullish breakout. I will note, however, with some interest, that uh, the semiconductor index, which is the bulwark of uh, this tech rally, has broken today for the first time since the um, uh, um, Steve Mnuchin, I can barely say the name's name of the guy's name without vomiting, uh, uh, his interference uh, with the market. So it broke that trend line from the Boxing Day bottom. Uh, what else? What else? Um, let's look at the S&P 500. Here's the SPX. And we were at the highest point in all human history just a few days ago. May 1st. Uh, that was the highest ever. And it's been a bit of a bobble since then. Down, up, and then up, and then down. So uh, we're, we've, we're only a few days away from that peak but we have been slipping a little bit, nothing definitive. And you know, if this, this entire rally was based on China trade optimism and we've given up, you know, what, 10, 12% of it. Um, but I, I think, and maybe this be my principal point, I think that um, the public is so accustomed to BTF, BTFD and everything turning out okay that, that nobody believes that they're going to actually stick to their guns and let the deal go sour. Uh, because that would obviously mean just catastrophe for the financial markets, which they don't want. So the, the, the underlying belief is they will come up with a deal no matter what it takes. But uh, yeah, so I think that's a, a tremendous unspoken bid beneath this market. You know, if Friday morning, there's a picture of both sides making obscene gestures at one another and saying, go straight to hell, we're never going to talk again. You know, then you can expect some real excitement. I really don't expect something like that to happen, though. Uh, anything else to go over? Um, no, Russell 2000, we'll make that our last one. Here's the Russell 2000, the small caps. And I was very bothered by this because. As recently as yesterday, this looked completely primed to rally. And uh, there's the click, click, click of one of my dogs. Um, and it hasn't quite broken this uptrend yet. So the, the Russell's actually still in pretty good shape. Uh, it, it got above the horizontal for a little while. And there's a pixel or two of damage here, but by and large, the uptrend is intact. We need to get below Tuesday's lows to really break this thing. So that, that is indeterminate. All right, that's it from me. This is going to be a really interesting week. Good luck.